The Carlon model first aid package was originally designed at and took its name from the Carlon Barracks Military Reservation in Pennsylvania in the early 1920s, the same place where the Medical Department Equipment Laboratory was first established on October the 1st, 1920. The first aid packet had been in use with the US military since before the coming of the Great War in the form of the first aid packet dash US Army. This dressing, already developed in 1904 and subsequently introduced in 1906, was supplied to the troops in a sealed brass casing to protect the bandage inside against gas attacks and to also ensure that it remained sterile. These first aid packets were opened by pulling a metal D-ring which separated the two halves of the packaging, revealing the paper sealed bandage within. This consisted of three separate items, two sterile bandages and two large safety pins. As medical advances and discoveries were made, it was found that the first aid packet was inadequate for dealing with frontline casualties and wounds. Nevertheless, millions were produced during the First World War. Following the Great War, millions of first aid packets dash US Army containing sm small sterile dressings and carried by each soldier in a pouch attached to his pistol belt or cartridge belt were still available, packed and sealed in their little brass olive drug containers. Notwithstanding the general policy and utilise existing stocks first, a medical equipment laboratory, part of the Medical Field Service School, Carlisle Barracks, Pennsylvania, started investigating methods to improve existing medical equipment and explore the possibility of introducing new products. Studies were made in 1922 which would ultimately lead to a new first aid packet, comma, US government Carlisle model. The new metal container with improved contents. In 1927, depression and budget restrictions would however hold up manufacture, although its characteristics were widely known to the US Army authorities with the new item being designated first aid packet. As a result, an improved version was introduced in 1940, designated first aid packet, US government Carlisle model to tackle the problem of frontline wounds and casualties. This new bandage, according to FM 21-11, first aid for soldiers contain the following one wound dressing and one sulfur packet of five grams wrapped double wrapped in a sterile shaker top envelope. The Carlisle bandage however underwent a number of changes in its development during World War II. Very early examples of the Carlisle bandage tin was issued in sealed pressed brass or tanga containers once again designed to ensure the sterility of the bandage contained within. These early examples of the first aid packets did not yet contain the sulfur shaker envelope. That was only introduced in the end of 1941. These were painted using an olive drab number no. 7 colour shade. Containers manufactured by the medical department workshops did not bear the department's markings while those supplied by Baron Black of Chicago displayed the manufacturer's name. More manufacturers would receive government contracts. As the war raged on, the supply of strategic materials such as steel, iron, copper and brass became more limited and so the government pressed for a number of studies to develop alternative solutions. One of the first alternative results was a simple white wax tucked in carton containing a bandage designated small 
first aid dressing. It was already introduced in the summer of 1940. Numbers of the new container were produced by the Medical Equipment Laboratory without any indication of the supplier name. Later, a contract was signed with two suppliers, Bout and Black Division of Chicago and Handypad Supply Co., Massachusetts. But the contract was Conray Products Co., New York, in 1940, calling for the production of 2 million first aid packets. But it was estimated that delivery would not be completed until March 1942. Brush sheeting needs to manufacture the metal case which enclosed the dressing could not be obtained with sufficient quantities. To solve this material shortage, copper was substituted for brass in contracts negotiated after March 1941. But by the end of the year, copper was no more available than brass. Steel was then substituted and two additional supplies were obtained who were prevailed upon to provide themselves with dyes. Shortly after contracts had been made with these two companies, the War Production Board refused to allocate any more steel for the first aid packet containers. Consequently, the medical department had to look for other solutions. In view of the above shortages and restrictions an alternative form of cheaper packaging was considered for the first aid packet and in summer of 1940 the first aid dressing made its appearance this small first aid dressing u.s army carlisle model was contained in a rectangular tucked in carton printed with the required markings and dipped in wax in brackets as a water repent treatment In the middle of 1941, the medical department decided to amend their specifications and placed purchase orders for containers made out of tin instead of brass. The new version was introduced by the fall of 1941, together with the first aid sulfamide shaker envelopes. When additional restrictions for raw materials became mandatory, the medical department once more had to be inventive and now looked towards the expanding plastics industry. The Tennessee Eastman Corporation produced a moulded plastics container called Tenite for the bandage, which once again was sealed to ensure the contents remained sterile. These slightly different variations were constructed of olive drab, number no. 7, plastic and manufactured by ACME Cotton Products Co. During the early part of 1943, with production steadily falling behind medical department requirements, plastic container entered production. Field tests of this packet, however, soon proved to be more insufficient. The nature of the material meant that the item was susceptible to warping and breaking. By the fall of 1941, it had been realised that in order to effectively administer first aid, frontline troops needed to be issued with sulfanamide to protect against infection. As a result, 5 gram sulfanamide shaker envelopes began to be introduced into the first aid packets. In order to identify those packets, which now contain sulfanamide, the US government began to imprint many of the first aid packet tins on the reverse with the caption with sulfanamide. Various styles of this imprinting can be found. A further effort was made by the US government in 1942 to easily identify the packets which contain sulfanamide. Existing packets were therefore recalled. The sulfanamide shaker envelope added to the packet finished in a red-orange coloured paint to, to identify the packet as containing sulfur. Contracts were eventually issued for manufacturers to produce the first aid packet. 
Shortly after the latter two were contracted, the government refused to allocate any more steel and other alloy for the production of the containers. The medical department then worked out new specifications, calling for more alternative solutions. In the course of 1943, it was to take a rather radical step by adopting laminated paper and a lead foil wrapper already in use with the food industry. The new container passed every test applied to the medical equipment laboratory at Cardinal Barracks, Pennsylvania, proving in use to be more satisfactory than even the original brass container. It was moreover less expensive to manufacture. The items were now wrapped in a laminated paper reinforced with aluminium or lead foil and covered internally with either plyofilm, cellophane or polyvinyl and for extra protection. The item was then placed inside an appropriate wax cardboard shell. Its official designation was either small first aid dressing, US Army, Carlisle model or packet first aid brown dressing US Army Carlisle model white bandage material replaced by field brown coloured shade in early 43 it is to be noted that the laminated paper wrappers came in different colours medium brown dark brown dark green and black moreover some markings clearly mentioned with sulfanamide, what others did not. In addition to the first aid packets, all soldiers were first provided with a single sulfanamide shaker envelope by the end of 1941. Packed inside the bandaged container and later with a set of eight sulfadazine tablets in early 1942. Stored along with the first aid packet in the web pouch attached to the pistol or cartridge belt. The FM-21-11 states Sulfadazine or sulfanamide packets carried in the web pouch attached to the cartridge or pistol belt contains 8 sulfadazine tablets of 0.5 grams each or 12 sulfanamide tablets 0.5 grams each it is important to note that the very first version of sulfur drug made available in 1941 did contain 12 sulfanamide tablets. They were subsequently replaced by the single shaker envelopes containing crystalline powder and later in 42 by small containers numbering 8 sulfadazine tablets. As stated above, the later did not fit into the container and was subsequently carried inside the web pouch or pouch dash first aid packet stock number 74 P 260.